Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Once again, God has blessed us to see another day, and we are so thankful to that. We give God all praise, honor, and glory for allowing us to be here. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is such an awesome God, and in the midst of everything, God is still in control. We just thank him for being God. He's brought us through so much in these last couple of years, and he's still, he's still sustaining us, and he's still keeping us, and that's why I praise him. That's why I, I lift him up and exalt him. And as David says, if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, where would we be? Or may, may Israel say, as David said, but I'm going to say, where would we be if it hadn't been the Lord? God is orchestrating things to show himself mighty through this situation and through this pandemic and this sickness and this time of, of economic trial and tribulation. It shows that God, God is in control. God knows what he's doing, even though we can't see it. God, we just have to trust him. God knows what he is doing. Amen. Amen. And we do solicit your prayers for the sick and um, those who are, are shut in and those who are going through at this time, maybe the loss of a loved one or um, it's some other, some other trial that they may be going through. We do solicit your prayers for them. Um, as always, our leadership and, and decisions have to be made and they're critical decisions that will affect all of us. But we know that God still has it under control. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord today. And before we get into our word, I ask that you join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, how you look beyond all of our faults and you see our need. It's a new day, Father, and we thank you and we give you praise for it, not for the money, not for the cars and the houses, but because you are our Father, you are our God, and a loving and kind God, and we thank you for it. Father, we pray now for, for those who are sick. We pray for the caretakers who are watching over them. We pray for those who need comfort and consolation during a time like this of their trial and tribulation. Father, we pray for our leaders in the name of Jesus that you touch their mind and touch their hearts, that they make decisions that's best for the people. Lord, we know that it's in your hands and we're leaving it in your hands. Father, I, Father, I ask that you bless this word. Bless this word. Bless the hearers and the doers of this word, Father. And I know that your word is blessed, Father, but let it fall on good ground. Let it fall on good ground. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, our, our, our lesson is coming from the gospel according to St. Matthew. The gospel according to St. Matthew and that sixth chapter. Gospel according to St. Matthew and that sixth chapter. I want to read a couple of verses and then we'll take our premise from there. Starting at that 14th verse of the gospel of St. Matthew for if you if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Verse 15 says, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Amen. And we'd like to speak to you from a thought today. You've got to let it go. You've got to. To let it go. Amen. Today I want to I want to just share with you or talk with you um, a little bit about one of the one of the hardest parts of the Christian walk. And I want to talk to you about forgiveness. Without forgiveness, we we wouldn't have Christianity as we as we know it. Without forgiveness, we would all be doomed to hell and condemned sinners without hope of any kind. Forgiving others is something that is, is commanded by Jesus, as we see in our, our text today, because the word tells me that if I don't forgive, neither will God forgive me 
of the, of the many sins that I commit. And if you're sitting out there with your, with your holy self, saying that forgiveness is not hard, I said the devil is a lie. To forgive somebody of something, some wrongdoing or something, something that they've hurt you really deeply, that, that's hard. That's hard. And the truth ain't in you if you say that forgiveness is not hard. Forgiveness is a hard thing. You know, just ask somebody who who's had somebody to steal something from them and and they and it caused them to lose their their car or their house. And 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 they they all because somebody did them wrong. Just ask somebody if forgiveness, if forgiveness, if forgiveness is hard, who who been lied to by someone they felt that they could trust and only to get stabbed in the back. Ask somebody if forgiveness is hard who's had a spouse to cheat on them and, and break the vows of holy matrimony when they thought everything was, was good. That's somebody who um, had a so-called brother or so-called friend and betrayed them and sold them out for just a little bit of money. Forgiveness is a hard thing. If you don't believe it, just ask somebody who whose loved one has been killed by a, a drunk driver or somebody who was zooted out of their mind for, for no reason. And they have to forgive that person who did this to that person whom they love. Forgiveness is a hard thing. So don't fool yourself like you can just do it and just go on. Forgiveness is a hard thing. See, and some of you might be thinking that forgiveness is not hard because you don't really know what it is. You, you see, sometimes when we say like, oh, we can do that. You don't know what you have to go through or you don't know what it is. When we look at forgiveness, forgiveness means to dismiss to release, to leave, or to abandon, to grant free pardon. That's what, to grant free pardon, to give up all claim. You see, the old cliche said, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget you. But true forgiveness means totally dismissing and releasing a person of any wrong that he or she has ever done toward you. You got to let it go. See, forgiveness is a hard thing. Because when I said that, you know, forgive and forget, some of you are saying, I, I, I can't forget. How can you forget something that, but we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. But you got to let it go. And we're going to talk about that more. See, because when you keep unforgiveness in you, unforgiveness keeps you under the bondage of sin. By holding that grudge, by holding it, that's one of the things in which Satan, in which Satan uses to keep you under the bondage of sin. Some of us are miserable because we refuse to forgive somebody who's done us wrong. See, some of us still holding grudges toward folk who did us wrong years ago. I mean, years ago, she stepped on my toe and she ain't even say I'm sorry. This is 10 years ago. And as long as you hold on to the mess, and don't release it, you're going to be stuck where you are right now and you will not be able to grow any further in the Lord because of that unforgiveness in your heart. You're wondering why I, I, I can't praise like somebody else. You're wondering why you are not in good relationship with God. You're wondering why, because you got to search yourself and see if there is some kind of unforgiveness somewhere in your heart. If there's somebody whom you have not let go. I got a story. I'm reminded of a story of a little boy who, who loved basketball and he's around the house just trying to shoot basketball. Boy, any little chance he get, he's shooting basketball. Little boy, four or five years old, he's shooting basketball. And so there was a, a, a waste basket over there in the corner and um, little boy went in the kitchen. He was just shooting basketball, shooting basketball, a little ball of trash. And he threw it and it went into a vase that his mom had that she was going to put some flowers in instead of the trash can. So he, he, the paper, the paper went in the vase and he stuck his hand in the vase. And you know how a vase is where it's wide at the top, then it gets narrow, then wide back out. He stuck his hand, it fit in there real easy. And he grabbed the paper and, and he couldn't put it out because he had the paper in his hand. He couldn't get it out. And he was struggling. He was struggling in the vase to get the paper out. And he couldn't. And, and his father happened to be sitting in the living room. And he looked over there and he saw his son struggling with something behind the counter. And he, he went over there to his son. And his son said, Dad, I was just shooting basketball with the trash. 
um, in my hand and and I and it went into to the, this thing right here and I can't get my hand out and his daddy saw his hand in the vase and he said what you got in there he said I'm holding on to this little ball of trash that I had and he said okay son okay and he said I can't get my hand out I said okay son let the trash go and when he released the trash his hand came out of the vase then he said but daddy the the, the ball of trash is still in there he said, don't worry about that son I'll take care of it. And he got the vase and just turned it upside down and got the ball of trash out and he threw it away. Now, now, some of y'all missed that right there. The point that I'm trying to make is that some of us are holding on to some trash that someone did to us for a long time and we're struggling and we're refusing to let it go. But the Lord sent me here today to tell you that if you release it, he'll take care of it and you will be free. In other words, you got to let it go. You can't hold on to that mess because as long as you hold on to that mess, you're going to be struggling. You're going to be dealing with stuff and you won't. But if you release it, God said, if you release it and put it into my hands, I will set you free. You got to let it go. See, some of you, some of you are still saying, Pastor, I, I hear what you're saying and, and I can forgive. I can forgive people for what they've done, but I, I can't forget it. And this is what I'm alluding back to what I was, I started talking about a little, a little while ago. As, as, as our natural man is conditioned to remember traumatic events and, and circumstances that have affected our, affected our lives to the point that they've caused us to change our attitude and, and our way of thinking about matters. These things happen and, and, and they stick with us. We learn through a lot of conditioning. See, we can never forget what somebody did to us. I don't, I don't care who you are. You can never forget something that's hurt you so deeply, something that's hurt you so bad. But, but, we can get to a point in Jesus. We can get to a point in Jesus that whatever they did to us doesn't hurt or make us angry anymore. Now, we, we ain't going to forget what you, I ain't going to forget what you did to me years ago, but how it made me feel is not going to, I'm not going to have that same feeling anymore if I let you go. If I let it go, I can I can remember a lot of things that folks have done to me over the years, but I had to release them not for them, but for me. I had to forgive them so that I would not have an effect on me anymore. R remember, part of the definition of forgiveness is to release or to give up all claim, which means that you're trying to hold on to that little bit or that little grudge and say that I got something on you or I got a reason to hurt you, but you got to give up all claim if you truly forgive them. Even if they don't ask for forgiveness, you have to release them and you, you know, to, to free yourself. A a amen. See, that, that sounds crazy because some of us have been taught that you got to wait until they didn't even come back and ask for ask for forgiveness or ask, ask, uh, beg their pardon. They don't have to. Forgiveness is not for the other person. You got to understand this, baby. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Yeah, yeah, you're the victim. You're the person who was done wrong, but yet in order for your relationship to remain solid in Jesus, you got to forgive them even though they didn't come back to you and apologize. You got to release yourself. Remember what Jesus says in the scripture here. He says, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be forgiven because man, we mess up all the time. If you are gonna be forgiven, you got to be able to forgive or you got to forgive. And that's not saying that this other person is gonna come back to you, but you got to let them go or you got to let it go in order for Christ to release you of your sins. Amen. Because there's some folks listening to me right now who can't have a good relationship with anybody because of what somebody else has done to them in their past. We got women and men who are just angry because Bobo and Susie Q did them wrong. Men and women can't trust their spouses because of what somebody else has done. You always looking crazy at them. If, if they look at their phone, who is that? You know, because of what somebody else has done. That unforgiveness that they're holding toward um, those people who, who got them, uh, who, who has hurt them, got them interrogating their, their husbands and their wives as though they're the FBI. 
<laughs> and the only way that it's going to get better is that you turn away from your past and you look toward your future. You got to release it. You got to release it. You got to let it go. You got to forget about that mess. You got to walk away. That, that reminds me of, of another story. A man had got a promotion on his job and he said, baby, it's time to go out and celebrate. So him, he, his wife and, and he had an older daughter, a, a, a middle son and a younger son. And the younger son was two, three years old, and they were, they were potty training him. So they went to the best, the fanciest restaurant in town, most expensive restaurant. Man, he got, he got his money. But anyway, the most expensive restaurant in town, and the little boy wanted to use the bathroom. He needed to use the bathroom. So his father took him to the bathroom, and he went inside the stall, and the father stood outside the stall and waiting for him. To use. He was a big boy. He was going to use the potty by himself. And his father noticed that it was taking him a long time. And then his father asked, he went to the door and said, son, you are, you all right? Is everything all right? He, he, said, he said, yes, sir. He said, so dad, is dad asked, so, so what's wrong? He said, daddy, um, I, 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 I want to flush the toilet, but I don't see the, the, the handle on there like it is at the house. And his daddy opened the door and he saw the little red light blinking. And then his dad realized that it was an auto flush toilet. So his daddy said, oh, son, son. This kind of toilet don't have a handle. See, in order to get rid of the mess in there, you have to walk away from it. And then it'll flush on its own. <laughs> My God. The son, the little boy turned and walked away and the door closed on it. And when, when the door closed, he heard, swoosh, he heard it flush. And he said, doggone it, I got it now. He went and washed his hands and all of them went out and they had a good meal. See, there's some of you, I just lost some of you. Some of you still didn't catch on. Amen. Sometimes the only way that you can forgive somebody of what they've done or even, even stuff that you've done yourself, you got to turn and walk away from the mess. Amen. Amen. See, some of us, some of us can't forgive because we keep looking at the mess instead of turning and walking away. And as long as you're there looking at the mess, especially in that commode, so to speak, as long as you're looking at the mess, it ain't going nowhere. Amen. But if you turn your back to it and if you walk away from it, the mess will disappear on its own. Amen. It, 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 as close as you are to it, the smell might still be there for a minute. But the further you walk away from it, the less that smell is. And eventually you will release yourself and won't smell it anymore. My God, I wish somebody would catch on to it. And when you begin to understand that some things won't leave you until you leave them. You're going to always be in a mess. You got to understand that you got to let it go. You got to let some things that they did. You got to turn and walk away. You got to close that door. You got to walk away from it toward your future. And I got to hurry to a close here. But before I go, I want to leave you with five keys to walking in forgiveness. These five things, you do these five things and you'll walk in forgiveness. Amen. Amen. The first thing that you have to do, for, you have to know is the first key is that forgiveness is a command and not a suggestion. Oh, my goodness. Forgiveness is a command and not a suggestion. Jesus didn't say that 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 um you you can forgive if you want to forgive jesus said you better forgive others if you want to be forgiven a a amen he wasn't asking you if you would he was telling you that you better that's why the scripture said if you forgive those who trespass against you god will forgive you of your trespasses but if you don't forgive there is a stipulation for God forgiving you. If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. So that's the first key you got to understand. Forgiveness is a command and not a suggestion. The second key that you got to understand is that there is no limit to forgiveness. Oh my goodness, there is no limit to forgiveness. How many times have we gone to God asking forgiveness of the same sins that we've committed and then we believe that he's forgiven us? Because God said that he would, we got to believe that. We got to believe that. Peter came to Jesus and asked him, he said, how many times should I forgive my brother who sinned against me? Should it be seven times? Jesus replied and told him, no, it should be seven times 70. That's what Jesus told him. 
seven times. And that's not putting a number at 490 times. That's saying you should keep forgiving them. Hey, amen. There is no limit to forgiveness. There's no limit to forgiveness. Now watch this. Watch this. Don't be a fool in thinking that even, even though there's no limit to forgiveness, that folks have to be restored to where they were before they hurt you. A amen. Before you, because there, there are issues with trust here. I forgive you. It's not going to hurt me, but I can't put you in that same place where I had you before you hurt me. A a amen. I can forgive you. I can forgive you. I can forgive you. And I ain't got, and it doesn't have to hurt me anymore, but I don't have to put you in the place where you were with me before you hurt me. They just get that. The Holy Ghost don't let anybody make a fool of you. Amen. So first of all, first of all, that first key, you got to understand it's a command and not a suggestion. The second key is there is no limit to forgiveness. The third key that you got to understand is unforgiveness holds us in bondage. Unforgiveness holds us in bondage, even though we might be the people who were the person who was done wrong to, it can hold you in bondage. Without forgiving others, you cannot be forgiven of your sins. A -a Amen. In, in, in gospel according to Matthew, in, in chapter in chapter 18, the Bible tells us about a king who forgave a servant who came and, and the servant he was he was taking, he was checking his books, and this servant owed him ten thousand talents. Which which could uh, which could amount to millions of dollars that he could not repay uh, could not repay and the servant the servant said please forgive me forgive me the king forgave him of all of that debt the king forgave him every little bit he got out of got out from in the king's sight walking down the street saw somebody who owed him a, a few talents who owed him a couple of dinero five ten dollars he got he laid hold on him said give my money. And the man said, please, just give me a little time to pay it. And the man said, oh, I want my money now. And because he couldn't pay it, pay it, he had that man thrown in the prison. The king heard about it. The king said, oh, man, you, you, you worthless servant, you. He took back his pardon and had that man cast in the prison because he would not forgive somebody else, even though he had been forgiven. And God is the same way. As long as you refuse to forgive somebody else, God holds your sins and your trespasses on you. Amen. So you got to understand forgiveness is a command. Amen. Not a suggestion. Forgiveness, there, it has no limits to it. And thirdly, third key is unforgiveness holds us in bondage. You got to let it go. Even if they don't come back, you got to let it go. The fourth key is forgiveness is not a feeling, but it is a decision. Forgiveness is not a feeling. It is a decision. You may never feel like forgiving someone because you've been hurt, cut, scarred, all this other stuff. You, you know, you, you don't feel like it because of the pain, but you have to make a conscious decision to do it anyhow. Even though you might not forget, you got to do it anyhow for your sake, for your soul's sake. So it, it's not a feeling because the feeling is I ain't going to ever forgive. I ain't going to ever forgive you or forget this. Well, how many times folks have said, I can never forgive you for this. But in order to see Jesus, you better find it some way to make up in your mind that I got to let it go. Because if you don't, you will not see Jesus. That's not call out word. This is what Jesus read. Read that six, read that sixth chapter of Matthew and that 15th verse. If you do not forgive others of their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. So it cannot be about your feeling. It's got to be a conscious decision. Emotions can cause us to make wrong choices. How many times have we messed up because we got mad? How many times have we said the wrong thing because we were hurt or we got mad? Amen. And that is why it's got to be, uh, it's got to be based, forgiveness got to be based on your knowledge of the word of God. You got to, you got to base it on that in order to forgive. A Amen. Amen. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a command. Not a suggestion. There is no limit to forgiveness. Unforgiveness holds you in bondage. Forgiveness is not a feeling, but a decision. 
And finally, the fifth key, reconciliation is always the answer. You cannot afford any areas of unforgiveness in your life. None of us can, can afford any areas of unforgiveness in our lives. We have to let it go. I don't care who it was. I don't care what they did. You got to let, if you want to go on into your future and also see Jesus, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. You, even if that person is gone out of your life, gone and left you and whatever, you got to let them go. And you got to let them go. You never, you may never see them again and wait for them to apologize or whatever. You got to let them go and reconcile that with the Lord. Amen. Because some folks have done some stuff and, and folk, they have gone to the grave and folks still holding that over them and they're in the grave now. Let it go because your soul is in danger. Reconcile back with the Lord so you can go on. You must also keep, we, we, we must keep our conscience clear and keep ourselves reconciled, reconciled to one another and to the Lord. So we got to let it go. So those are the five keys for you to walk in forgiveness. Amen. And I can't leave you without giving you the, the, the prime example of letting it go. The Bible says Jesus lived here 33 and a half years, walked the streets among all kind of men, healing the sick, raising the dead, fed so many, fed 5,000 men plus the women and children. He did all of this only at the end, only to have at the end of this, at the end of his life, people to lie on him so that they could crucify him. And he had done nothing but good, but they wanted to crucify him. So they got him, put nails in his hand, nails in his feet. March him up Golgotha's hill, people spitting on him. They whipped him and doing all sort of cursing him, mocking him. Come down if, if you are the son of God. Save, save yourself and save us. Even one of the thieves on the, on the cross, both of them started out that way. But one of them said, wait a minute, this man has done no wrong. He said, remember, he, he called out to Jesus. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. But before Jesus gave up the ghost, before he died, before he, he, he said it's finished, Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to let it go. I'm, I'm about to give up the ghost and I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have any indignation. I'm not going to have any anger toward them. I'm not going to have any kind of malice toward them. I'm letting it go. Yeah, they did me wrong. I know, I know they did me wrong. I'm God incarnated in the flesh. I have told them who I was, but I'm letting it go because I, 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 got a kingdom that I, I, I got a kingdom and I got to set an example for my people. If I tell them they got to forgive, I got to show them that no matter what they did to you, you got to forgive also. So if Jesus let it go after what they did to him, if Jesus let it go, you got to let it go also. We got to let it go. Amen. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, Free yourself. Let it go. Is it easy? No, nah, it ain't easy. But let it go. In order for you to see Jesus, you got to let it go. Amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you as I pray. We hope that you have gotten something out of the lesson today. Amen. We, we do thank you so much for your support. Um, of this channel and this ministry, your continued support. God, God bless you. I, I, I um, hear a lot of folks saying that they've been blessed through the word on this channel. And we thank God for you out there sharing this word wherever you share, no matter how you share. I thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for the financial support that you, you give to this ministry. You know, it, God is, God is truly blessed even being away from the house because there are other things that we have to handle in this ministry. I know a lot of stuff is behind the scene, but you don't, you don't make a show 
of what you're doing for the Lord. Amen. You don't do things for the pats on the back and all of this stuff. You do it for the glory of God. Amen. So we thank you for that. Our trustee committee will be back at the house for tithes and contributions on Saturday, May the 22nd. This Saturday that's coming at 10 a.m. from about 10 a.m. to 1130. So if you're coming out or coming by, drive by, speak. Amen. And, and say hello to, you know, a, a couple of us and, you know, go on about your business. Even though I know the CDC talking about you know, mass mandates, you've had the shot, you don't have to wait. Anyway, be safe, be safe. But anyway, come on by and do that. But if you're mailing your contribution in, that address is Miss Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275. I almost forgot it. Baxley, Georgia, 31515. That's Miss Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Got to get out of here. Keep our sick and shut in, bereavement in prayer, those in bereavement in prayer. Um, keep our leadership in prayer. Amen. And remember, pray for me as um, I, I'm about to embark on another <laughs> another chapter in my life. Amen. We hope to retire uh, from the educational system. And uh, next week or the week after next should be should be my, my last week after 33 years in education and we'll see where the lord takes us from there but keep me in prayer as i pray for you amen i love all of you um continue to be safe when you go out um, follow the follow the rules that you've been following them before don't don't trust that everything is all honky dory and and free so you you continue to follow those three w's amen amen wear your mask watch your distance and keep your hands washed. Amen. All right, we're gone. We're through. And we pray that you have a wonderful day today. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day outside. So we pray that you have a wonderful day. And remember, don't hold on to the mess that you've had. Let it go and give it to the God. Give it to the Lord. Amen. I love you. I love all of you. Take care until we meet again. <laughs>